And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting adventure on Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we are going to try a Nuttle Family Pinot Noir. This is called uh, Bill's Hidden Track. We'll get to that and uh, whatever that means. Uh, we'll, we'll get to all that in a little bit. Um, it, but this should be an interesting one to drink. I, I tried this. Well, actually, I didn't try this. I, I went to the wine store, and uh, this was one of the ones that was recommended. Actually, you know what? I think I did taste test this one just briefly. Um, I don't really remember what, what it tasted like, to be honest. So we're going to try it, open it up tonight, see how it tastes. We're going to pair it with some foods. I have some great food to pair it with that my lovely wife, Chi, prepared. So we're going to try it out uh, and see how it works. We're also going to talk about uh, some other stuff. I've got a news item to share with you as well uh, from the wine world, as well as we're going to talk about uh, some uh, wine labeling 101, and we're going to cover that just a little bit, and we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to, of course, do the usual stuff, toasting birthdays, anniversaries. We have some birthdays to toast, a really nice anniversary to toast, and uh, well, some national days. This should be fun. Anyway, uh, if you're just joining me for this first time, this is a stream of consciousness uh, kind of show. I do have some show notes, and they're right there. Uh, but, but sometimes we get off on tangents. We talk about other stuff. We're just having fun. This is a show about wine, kind of. It is. But it's also a show about you and me, about us. This isn't about me. This is about us. So join me in the chat. Speak up. Tell me how you're doing. Uh, tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you're not drinking. Tell me what you'd like to be drinking. Tell me what you'd like to see me drink, and we'll see if we can make that happen uh, on a future wine stream. Anyway, uh, if you're just joining me now, uh, of course, you can watch me on Facebook. You can watch the show on, you can watch us, I should say. Watch us on uh, the Facebook page, Drink With Rick. You can also catch us on YouTube at Drink With Rick, and you can join in the chat there. I've got the chat open right now, and uh, I, we, we have someone watching the chat. We don't have anyone engaging right now. You can uh, watch on Twitch, twitch.tv, and uh, watch on Periscope through uh, Twitter. You, you can go to Twitter, Drink With Rick at Twitter, and we're on live right there. I can see us right there live on uh, on Twitter. So you can connect with me there, and you can watch live, and you can tweet me live, and I'll, I'll respond to the tweets uh, in kind as, as soon as I can. Also, you can watch us on the website, drinkwithrick.com. That's drinkwithrick.com uh, on the Saturday Night Wine stream there. And uh, there is no chat in the box. You can watch live, uh, but... Uh, you can go down below where the 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 uh, video is and uh, comment, and I will respond to your comments. Of course, you can also contact me at rick at savoyamedia.com. That's rick at s-a-v-o-i-a-m-e-d-i-a.com. Uh, of course, the podcast, you can catch the podcast um, on Monday nights. It, it, it comes down Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. You can catch it wherever you can listen to podcasts, pretty much. Look for uh, Drink With Rick. And um, uh, you'll be sure to hear the show if you like to, to listen in the car or, or listen whenever uh, after the fact. And um, we can uh, you can catch up with us there. <laughs> All right, well, tonight... We have, let's say, let's check the chats here. And in Facebook, we have, uh, Tim has joined us in the chat. Tim, I'm happy you're here. Uh, how are you doing? How's your, your daughter doing? How's uh, the family? And um, Frosty has joined us tonight. Frosty, you know, uh, I need to get you, you need to get me, uh, send me, uh, private message me or uh, email me you, uh, a shipping address where I can send you the, the items that you won uh, during the holidays. You know, that uh, I think it was a T-shirt uh, I think is what you you won in there, and I need to get that information from you so I can send it to you. And uh, my lovely wife Chi has joined us in the chat also. Tim says doing well, thanks. Well, I'm glad to hear that, and uh, I'm I uh, glad that you're here and stick around. We're gonna have some fun tonight. Um, there was something else. What was it? This is my stream of consciousness going off uh, in another direction at the moment. Oh, yes. Also, Bill, Bill Horton, if you're watching uh, later or, or you catch us later on in the show now, uh, 
please uh, get in touch with me. I need your address as well because you want some items as well, and I need to, to get with you. I have a couple of things that I'm ready. To, they're ready to ship out, but uh, I haven't received um, I haven't received the the uh, addresses where I can ship these to. So if you can get those to me, uh, you know, when you get a chance, uh, that would that would be great, and I can get those out to you. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and go into the wine now. Tonight, what we're drinking. And let me show you. Let me make sure I've got the 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 wines up here. Uh, yes, we do. This is well. I guess it's not. <laughs> let me do this manually. My uh, my stream deck isn't uh, responding there. Okay. Well, this is a a Nuttle family Pinot Noir. This is from Sonoma Coast in California. This is a 2016. It's also called Bill's Hidden Track. That's, uh, I guess, I'm not sure exactly why it's called that. But uh, Bill, I think, is, is referring to William Nuttall, who is the, the, um, uh, uh, the winemaker in this case, who owns the Nuttall family winery. And he's been making wine for about 40 years or so. And this is the back end. Let me show you the, the back side of this wine, the back label. And I'll read this to you. What this is, uh, Nuttall Family, Bill's Hidden Track, our family's winemaking experience stretches over four decades now, but the mystery of wine still fascinates. The next generation has entered the fray, fully immersed in the vast puzzle that is winemaking. Bill has blended thousands of wines, marveling at how the various components merge like the tracks in a rock and roll recording. Um, that's an interesting analogy. Put every track in perfect balance and a sublime wine emerges. This is produced and bottled by William Nuttall Winery, Sonoma, California. Actually, I'm not sure if it's pronounced Nuttall or Nuttall. I'm, I'm pronouncing it Nuttall, so if anyone from Nuttall Winery or Nuttall Winery uh, wants to come and correct me, uh, you're certainly, it's certainly fine to do so. I have no shame. <laughs> uh, you can get more information at williamnuttall.com. This um, is... Uh, and this is also interesting. I'm, I'm going to bring this up later, but you can't really see it on the front label, but uh, it does say 13.5%. No, 13. Point, it says here 13. It's hard to read. Let's see. 13.3% alcohol by volume. Well, whatever it is, there is alcohol in it because it is a wine. So we'll... <laughs> We're going we're gonna to talk about this labeling here in, in a little bit as we get into the show. It should be fun. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and open this. And to do so, I have my foil cutter right here. We're going to open up this bottle. And it should be a clean, yes, it's a clean break there. And then, of course, I've got my trusty mechanical... This mechanical contraption is, for those of you who are watching for the first time, a, uh, a corkscrew, mechanical corkscrew bottle opener that my wife purchased for me at an estate sale. She got it for $5, but apparently it was sold by Aldi in the UK and uh, somehow wound up here in the US, probably from the estate that sold it. Anyway, I'm going to take that out later. <clears throat> it's a really nice contraption, by the way. Really, really like it. And to, uh, I'm going to pour the wine. I have my Veneto aerator from the Veneto Wine Lovers Kit. Uh, I have this, uh, you can actually purchase it. There's a link on my site, uh, an ad on my site, actually, somewhere for this. $19.99 for the entire kit. You can get it from Amazon, but you can get the, the, uh, th this thing, the aerator itself, for about uh, $14, $12, dollars $12.99, something like that, uh, at Amazon as well. And we gave a couple of these away at the uh, during the holidays on the wine stream. So, you know, I might pick up uh, another uh, couple more of these. They seem to be rather popular uh, with folks. And I think Matt or uh, John, somebody uh, from Wine Store, told me that they have a couple of these that they that they use. Um, 
maybe uh, you know, I'm trying to remember who it was that, that did, but they say they have a few. Anyway, so um, of course to pour it in here, I've got it in. I've got my trusty Cooper's Hawk genuine crystal glass from the Cooper's Hawk Winery and Restaurant in Orlando, Florida. We're going to go ahead and pour a little bit of this wine. Just a little bit. It has a nice color to it. I was expect the Pinot would be. It's a kind of a, a medium, almost a light bodied uh, wine, but it's a kind of medium body. And, and you can't really tell from the lights here because the lights are just shooting down on it straight down. So it looks dark on, on camera, but it really is from my vantage point, kind of a medium bodied wine. So it's not bad. We're going to let this I'm going to let this breathe just a little bit. And while we're doing that, I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to show you what I have to pair it with tonight. Tonight I have this plate that my lovely wife, Chi, uh, put together for me. Thank you, honey. I appreciate that. I'm talking to my wife now, okay? <laughs> uh, we have some pizza. This should, this should all go good with, uh, with a uh, Pinot. We have uh, some grilled burger that my wife made and uh, a slice of pizza with black olive in it. Uh, that came from a local place called uh, Brooklyn Pizza. Very, very good pizza, by the way. And uh, we have some rotisserie chicken. I think this came from Harris Teeter, our local supermarket here. We have some um, Gouda. We've got my favorite Gouda cheese from Trader Joe's, the creamy Gouda. We have some, it looks like some mozzarella here. And uh, this looks like smoked cheddar. I don't know that it's going to go well with smoked cheddar. Uh, I, I, I had a... a I think I was going to put a mild cheddar on here that would have gone really well with this, I think, but it um, doesn't look like it wound up on the plate. And also a dessert my, like, that my wife made. This is called a Millionaire's Bar. Um, this should be interesting to try it out but do, for a dessert. So while we're letting that wine breathe a little bit more, let me take a look and see. Uh, let's look at the, thing, uh, the, the particulars on this wine. This wine... Um, you know, it's interesting. I went searching for it on the uh, on the internet. This is a 2016, and it is sold out everywhere. Apparently, this vent this vintage is done. I went to the the website for the vintner, which is uh, the Nuttall family uh, farms. Their website is uh, interesting. It's it's not a whole lot to their site. Uh, they didn't have any information on this vintage except uh, I have a one sheet here from that I pulled up off the web from uh, a couple of years ago. And I can read that to you a little bit. Uh, I looking around a wine store, uh, which is where I purchased this wine store-online.com. They didn't even have it listed. It, it's still in their store, but it's not even listed. So uh, um, I believe that it's this is probably the last case that I uh, got got this wine from. Uh, maybe it's just the last uh, of their wines. And so maybe uh, if it's any good, I might want to go pick up a couple more before it's gone. 2016. Let's see, I think, uh, where else did I see it at? Uh, Chapel Hill Wine Company. They had it available for $23.99, and it is sold out there. Chapel Hill Wine uh, Company, I think Chapel Hill, North Carolina. $23.99 a bottle. Uh, I saw it at other places priced around the $20, $20 bottle one I, uh, price. I saw one for about $31, I think, $31 a bottle. I don't remember where I saw that. I think if I remember correctly, that's uh, what the price was. But at Wine Store, they uh, this is what I purchased it for at Wine Store. I, I've got the receipt right here. Wine Store, I purchased this bottle for $14.99. $14.99. So uh, we're going to find out if it's a, a, it's a $14.99 uh, bottle or not. I have some other particulars on this wine that I'll read it to you after I try this. I want to try this first, and uh, we'll give it a good swirl. See how it goes. Try not to. My wife just washed this. Remember last week I spilled some on my on my uh, sweater, and my wife cleaned that for me this past week. I don't want to, to get dirty again right away. Um, right away, I smell the berries. It's a it's a mix of different red berries in there. Uh, I can pick up a, some cherry, some maybe some uh, maybe a little raspberry in there. Uh, maybe a hint of strawberry. I think there's some strawberry in there. Yeah, a hint of strawberry. Let's see. A 
well-developed wine. It's um, it's dry. It's dry. It's it's not. Too, it's a little tannic, but not a lot. There are some tannins in there. Mild mild tannins, but um, it's it, it goes down fairly well. It has a it feels a little medium in, in terms of, of, of the flavors. Yeah, cherry, some strawberry, yeah. Maybe a hint, maybe a hint of plum. Maybe a hint of plum. And I, you know, it's funny, I, I thought I smelled raspberry on the nose, but I'm not really getting that now. few spices in there few spices and um, it's it's also it has it's a pretty smooth finish it goes down rather smoothly uh, it, it goes down pretty pretty well a little acidic I would say um, light to medium acidity and maybe just a slight oakiness to it Slight oakiness, not a whole lot, but it finishes well. I I, I kind of like this. It finishes well. I'm going to have a little bit more of this, and then we're going to pair it with some foods, and we'll talk to everyone in the chat here. Um, let me set that aside for a moment. Let's see what's going on in the chat here. Uh, Patty has joined us in the in the chat. Patty, great to see you. I'm I'm happy that you're here. Uh, stick around and tell me how you're doing. How how things are going with you? Of course, Patty is is uh, <clears throat> Patty and I go way back to the to the film club, the Orlando Cinematography Club of Orlando, which later became the um, Central, uh, the uh, Association of Cinematic and Video Arts, <laughs> that goes way, way back <clears throat> to uh, mid '80s, early '90s, <laughs> and um, and we had a lot of fun that club. We had a, made a few films and things like that. Had a lot of fun. Um, we all went out. We went out to eat a lot <laughs> after the club meetings. Okay, this Pinot should pair pretty well with a couple of things I have uh, picked out here. And you know, I, I forgot to bring out my my little miniature forks here, but I'm going to grab a couple now. Whoop. Let's see. Let's try it first with the burger, because that's I think that's what I really need to try this first with. Mm. And admittedly, the, the burger's a little cold. Because it's been sitting up here for a few minutes. It's still decent. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yeah, it goes well with the burger. It goes well with the grilled grilled burger. I like that. And Nancy's joined us in the chat. Nancy, it's great to see you. I'm, I'm happy to see you here as well. Nancy and... Mm, excuse me. Nancy and Tom Fenton are, are very old and dear friends of ours. Have been for many, many years. And Matt's in, uh, joined us in the chat as well. Matt, it's great to see you too. You know, we're drinking, uh, just in case you didn't know, we're drinking this Nuttall Family Pinot Noir that I purchased at Wine Store uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I'm trying it now. I want to try another Pinot. We did two Pinots two weeks in a row. And um, um, I'm not ashamed of that at all. I like, I like uh, a good Pinot. But this, um, we're testing it out right now. We're trying out with a few uh, wines here. Uh, a few wines. A few foods. <laughs> I haven't had enough of this wine yet. Uh, we're going to try it with this grilled chicken. I've got a grilled chicken here. Now, Pinot Noir, it can go okay with a, a good a grilled chicken. Not grilled, excuse me, roasted chicken. This was not bad. I like it better with the burger, but it's not bad with the with the chicken. Now, of course, we have. I do want to try it with the pizza. You know, with pizzas, pinots go pretty good with with um, like some pinots do actually go, and they're different different pinots like pinots from France and pinots from California, pinots from different regions. 
go to, uh, go good with better with certain foods than others. But as a general rule, a Pinot Noir will will pair pretty well with a wide range of foods. And um, this should go good with a pizza. However, if I had mushrooms on it, it might go it might go better uh, because uh, P- a Pinot Noir with a mushroom burger or a mushroom pizza, something like that, will usually pair up pretty well with. We'll try it with this. Mm. I like that pizza. Mm. Oh, good. I don't have enough of this pizza or this wine. This uh, I could I could eat, have pizza and wine all night. And what, couldn't you? Pizza and wine, great combination. Mm. Have some more of this. I don't want to be rude eating in front of everybody. So, if you got some wine, if you got something to eat, pair it with some wine. Do it now, please. Mm. This is good. I like that. That's a good pairing. That's a good pairing right there. Let's see anyone else in the chat. See what's going on Twitch. I'm checking around. I'm making sure that I'm not missing anyone here tonight. Because uh, I know I, I kind of neglected Twitch a little bit last week, and I found late in that, that there were a lot of people watching and, and commenting, and I, I missed some of the comments in the very beginning. I don't want to do that again. I don't like doing that. I don't. You know, I get onto other like I watch certain other shows. Like I'll watch Todd Cochran's Geek News Central uh, when he does his live streaming for his podcast. Uh, I'll watch the new media show with Todd and Rob Greenley. Um, and I, uh, I, I do a few other things, but mostly podcast-centric uh, uh, streams. But I'll get in the chat and, you know, I'll make some comments. And, you know, it's, it's a very social event. But I know, I know what it feels like to, to have uh, the host go on and on and then just ignore your comments. And I don't want to do that. That's not what I'm here to do. Once again, this is not about me. This is about us. So come on in. Don't be afraid to comment. Don't be afraid to tell me what's on your mind. We're going to try this with a little bit of the creamy Gouda. As always, this Pinot goes really good with the Gouda. Okay, I am going to have a little cracker to clear the palate. And um, we're going to toast some birthdays. There you go. Maybe a little water, too. The water should clear the palate. Okay. That helps. I'm going to be... Don't mind me. I'm going to be snacking on this throughout the show. This is good, especially, (laughs) I think, the pizza. We'll try the dessert later. But for now, let's refill the glass... Because we're going to toast some birthdays and some anniversaries, or an an anniversary, and um, <clears throat> we have some we have some birthdays coming up for for people that uh, I, I definitely want to recognize. Uh, first one goes to Mike Dell, my good friend Mike Dell from Blueberry.com. He is he's basically uh, he basically runs a support team over there, at Blueberry.com. And um, he is a great all-around guy. He's a really nice guy. He's been a podcaster for, for eons, just about, about as long as I've been podcasting, maybe a little bit longer. And uh, oh, he probably has been a little bit longer than me. Uh, I think he probably started podcasting in 2005. He's also a ham, a licensed uh, ham, radio, ham radio operator. Uh, he has many talents, and he's done, um, he's done a number of, of different shows. He, he does uh, a, a lot of different podcasts. And um, he's also very, very knowledgeable in the space. Anyway, here's to my friend Mike Dell. Happy birthday, by the way. Your birthday um, was is today, still for another hour and a half. So once again, Mike Dell, happy birthday. And my friend Mike. Also, uh, uh, it's uh, Raid Raid um, Alamed. I want to say happy birthday to you, too. It's been a while since I've seen or talked to you, but uh, he used to be a regular in uh, 
I used to be a listener of uh, the, the Force Field podcast, and um, we um, <clears throat> were, I first met him uh, with On Force when we were both doing contract work with On Force. And um, way back in the day when I was uh, doing IT work, and uh, he was a member of the Force Field forums for, for, um, for a long time. Anyway, here's to you. Happy birthday, Ryan. Happy birthday. Your birthday is uh, uh, Tuesday. It's actually coming up on Tuesday, 28th. So happy birthday. Also, I want to toast my good friend Christina, Christina Chamberlain. Uh, I know she's popped in the chat here once or twice, uh, sort of incognito, but I, I noticed that she's been in the chat a couple of times. And um, she is the wife of my dear friend and pretty much a brother to me. Um, brother from another mother, I guess you, sh you could say, um, Jim, Jim Chamberlain, Jim and I, uh, have, have been, uh, you know, very, very close friends. I consider him a, a brother and, uh, here's to you, Christina. Happy, happy birthday. I hope you're having a, a great one that, uh, this, I think your birthday is, your birthday is actually Wednesday coming up on the 29th. I just want to make sure I toasted you. I did not want to forget your birthday. I want to make a point not to forget your birthday. She is a really fine person. Um, and, uh, we, we all, we all love you, Christina. And we're, um, we want to celebrate your birthday. Happy birthday. And I'll toast you again as well, Christina, because, uh, you know, she is a dedicated mother and a wife, and um, just uh, she's just a fine person. Christina, here's to you. And, um, you know, my, my friend Jim, um, all my friends uh, have made some really, really good choices uh, in marriage and, and family life. And I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm real proud of Jim. He is a really, really nice guy. He's a great guy. Um, and um, I, I uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they, they, they have, uh, I have, I'm, I'm very blessed to have them as, as friends. And I really consider them more family than anything else, really. Uh, and also, I want to say happy birthday to my friend Rob, Rob Greenlee. Rob, your birthday is coming up on Thursday, and I didn't want to forget yours either. Rob and I have known each other for, for a long, long time. I met Rob, uh, well, online. I met Rob virtually uh, in uh, when he was working for Microsoft in the Zoom Marketplace, and I was first trying to get my podcast up on, on the Zoom Marketplace, and he helped me out uh, a, a lot there. And uh, he is uh, he currently, he has his own, he's currently working at Libsyn, I works for Libsyn, and uh, that's where uh, I've hosted some of my podcasts on Libsyn over the years. And he is also he also has his own podcast that he does, and he does the new media show, the weekly new media show with uh, with my friend Todd Cochran. Excuse me, no, I had enough of the food to go with the wine. Uh, anyway, uh, Rob is a really nice guy, and. Um, He's very, very knowledgeable about the space. Very knowledgeable. And Rob, here's to you. Happy birthday. I'll toast you again also. This is Rob, it's coming up Thursday, the 30th. Happy birthday to Rob Greenlee. And uh, I hope you're you're going to have a really, really great one. Do something, do something really special on your birthday, you know. And uh, let's see. We have an anniversary to toast. Yeah, it does it for the birthdays, but we have an anniversary to toast, and I want to toast uh, a really. Uh, now I I'm, um, I want to toast a, a couple here that uh, are celebrating their eleventh anniversary, their eleventh wedding anniversary. Uh, they they actually celebrated it yesterday. It was actually yesterday, twenty fourth Friday, and this is for Jared and and Rachel Easley. Jared and Rachel. Uh, Jared Easley is a co-founder of Podcast Movement, which is one of the largest uh, podcast uh, conventions, events in the country, here in the U.S. anyway. And it gets a lot of worldwide attention. People come from all around. I have not yet attended Podcast Movement. Now, here's the thing. 
I have yet to go to Podcast Movement. I, I've been to Podfest for the last couple of years. Tommy and I go to Podfest. It's in Orlando, as it will be this this year as well. And we already have our tickets for Podfest, but um, that's coming up in March. But uh, Podcast Movement, uh, I've been wanting to go for a long, long time. Have not been um, able to go, uh, generally because uh, the, where, usually where they hold it is in places where it's just not feasible in, in, in a times that it's not feasible for me to get to. Now, I'll tell you what, Jared, if you're listening, <laughs> if you're watching now, I know you've heard me say this before. I think well, you, uh, I, I actually officially met Jared when we... Uh, uh, when he came up for uh, last year for um, uh, a Charlotte meetup with a podcast movement to the, to the local Charlotte um, podcasters meetup. And uh, at the time, uh, you know, I, I made a mention to him that, you know, if you could have it a little bit closer, at least one year, like to Atlanta or someplace. Charlotte would be nice, but, you know, maybe in Atlanta or somewhere in Tennessee or somewhere where, you know, it's not too far for me to drive because I generally don't fly. That would be great. And um, But one of these days, if, if they ever host it in Atlanta or maybe, I don't know, maybe Washington, uh, somewhere near, not too far, and it's some major, you know, fairly major area, city, maybe Nashville or something like that, Charlotte, I then I def definitely try to make a point to go. Anyway, here's to you, Jared, and I didn't mean to get off a, on a tangent but there, but this is really about your anniversary, uh, Jared and Rachel. 11 years, happy anniversary. And you know what, I'll toast you again because I, I went too long on, on that other stuff and not enough on your anniversary. 11 years, happy anniversary. So, keep that on here, there we go. So, um, anniversaries are done. Now we got some national days to toast. Before we do that, let me get in the uh, to the chat and see what's going on in the chat. Uh, anyone going on on Twitch? If you're on Twitch and you're and you're just passively watching, speak up. I'm I'm here. I'm watching it. I'll I'll keep on. We did have some questions from folks in Twitch last week, um, and uh, I I did I think I did address that at the very end, but I I wanted to uh, reiterate. One of the things that we were that we were talking about last week, that um, when we were talking about the uh, presentation, I was doing a, a multi-part series on on presentation of wines and products in general, and how uh, wine the presentation of the wine is it, it really influences you uh, greatly, whether you're whether you, you realize it or not. It's it's a huge influence on whether you buy that wine and how you 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 purchase wine whether or not you like the wine most people have already made up their minds about the wine when they purchase that bottle usually unless it's really really bad unless it's corked or something when you see that wine label when you see that wine bottle or if somebody's recommended a wine to you you've pretty much already made up your mind what of, of how whether or not you're going to like this wine until you you know before you open it up and um uh, you know it's it's a lot of it's psychological and, you know, people collect wine bottles and they collect uh, wine labels. Yeah, there are people that collect wine labels. And there's actually a procedure, from what I've seen on the Internet, uh, there are procedures, people have developed procedures for removing labels from the bottles. <laughs> so they can save them and archive them. Now, I did not know this. Uh, I myself, yeah, I like to save a bottle of wine or two, you know, empty bottle, just because uh, I, I thought it was unique or I liked the, the design of the label or, or something. Uh, but I, I never was that fanatical about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Look behind me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fanatic about saving wine bottles. <laughs> of course not. Look, uh, <laughs> that's for show, okay? <laughs> he said. Um, but really, uh, there are people that are very, very... Um, that's their hobby. They collect wine bottles and wine labels and stuff like that. Now, I am going early into it. We haven't toasted the National Days yet, and here I am already getting to the presentation segment. But um, let's, let's, uh, let's do the National Days real quick, because we also have a news item that might interest most of you, or you might find it interesting. Uh, Pete has joined us in the chat also. Pete, it's great to see you. How are Denise and Aunt Connie doing? I hope everyone's watching. I hope Aunt Connie's doing well. I hope you and Denise are doing well. Um, you know, stick around 
and and tell talk to me in the chat tell me how things are going with you uh let's see where was i oh yes national days let's toast the national days for a minute we're going to uh, toast the national days that is where's my national day calendar uh here it is january 25th is national florida day now yes you know i've been waiting for this being a a a natural floridian natural born and raised floridian i am uh in, in fact a lot of people uh, even when i lived in florida there were you know, when people approach me and say, oh, you know, how long have you lived in Florida? Well, I was born and raised here, and they would raise their eyebrows because uh, a lot of people that have come down to Florida did not were not born in Florida. And uh, I am a native Floridian. I am a native Floridian. Now, I've lived in North Carolina for a total, actually for a total of 22 years now. Can you believe that? I never even thought of it. When I was born in Gainesville, Florida, spent the first two years of my life basically uh, living with my grandparents and, and my mom and dad on uh, on the on the coast in my grandparents house because they had a, a beach house on the uh, on and Flagler Flagler Beach I spent the first two years of my life there and we've gone back there many many times and I do consider that my first home because uh, for all intents and purposes it was and uh, I have a lot of fond memories. Uh, of 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 times, good times there. Um, my grandparents, uh, they were just great. They were wonderful, warm people. And uh, my grandmother was real. <laughs> she could be pretty strict. Reminds me of my wife, Chi. Sometimes she could be she could be a tough cookie, but but she's just just a really sweet person that showed you every day in in so many ways how much she loved and cared about you. Um, very very sweet lady. Um, now, uh, anyway, I'm digressing. <laughs> so I was born in Florida, and I, I lived in in, uh, the, in Florida for 35 years total. I was born in Florida. We moved up to North Carolina, lived there for uh, 10 years in Salisbury, moved back to Florida, back to Orlando. So I lived in in the in O Town and around the surrounding areas, Winter Park and um, Oviedo and, and places like that, uh, Winter Springs. Total for about 35 years, and then uh, we moved moved back up to Charlotte about 12 years ago. It's been 12 years now, so uh, uh, that's that's my story. You know, I'm sticking to it. Um, anyway, National Florida Day. I want to toast this with pride because uh, I love Florida. It is my home. Uh, here's to National Florida Day. And you know what? I'm going to toast it again, just because I can. And I still have plenty of wine left in this bottle to do so. So here's the National Florida Day. Um, I do have a, a, a very deep roots in Florida. Let's see, National Irish Coffee Day. National Irish Coffee Day. I like Irish coffee. You drink Irish coffee? Anybody here in the chat? You drink Irish coffee? You like it? Do, do you not like it? Um... Now, what do you think of Irish coffee? Uh, I, 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 you know, it's okay. It's okay. I could drink to National Irish Coffee Day. Uh, I'll, I'll do that. Why not? Uh, let me go back to my, here we go. Oh, no, that's wrong. Here we go. National Irish Coffee Day. Okay. And today is National Opposite Day. Did you know that today is National Opposite Day? Well, it is. For about another hour in... Um, 16 minutes, 17 minutes. National um, Opposite Day. So I go in this afternoon, and uh, I'm, I'm looking at the calendar. By the way, I'm, I'm looking at this on my National Day calendar, which, by the way, uh, I'm pulling all of these from. And you can pull up the National Day calendar at nationaldaycalendar.com, and uh, you can actually purchase one. They only have a few of them left. I think they're... They're uh, selling out on those calendars pretty quickly. So if you uh, have a um, if you have a national if if you want to buy a national day calendar, I, should, I just lost my Facebook feed for a minute. Sorry, that threw me off. <laughs> Looks like we're hanging up here on Facebook a little bit. Uh, let me know if it, if you lose this feed on Facebook. Let me know right away because uh, it's hanging up for me. So. Anyway, uh, where was I? 
if you don't have a national day calendar and you like the national days it's a lot of fun you can still purchase a national day calendar from nationaldaycalendar.com and uh, uh you might want to go get them now because they're they're going pretty quick anyway so i'm looking at the national day calendar the one that we have um uh, on our wall and uh, I noticed that today is National Opposite Day. So I go into um, my daughter's room and I, I say, Hey, Tia, did you know that today is National Calendar Day? Oh, no, it's good, National Calendar <laughs> Yeah, maybe I have had enough of this. Did, I, I said to her, Tia, did you know that it's National Opposite Day? And um, she said... Um, she said, no, it isn't. <clears throat> and I said, yes, today is National Opposite Day. She just says, well, if it's National Opposite Day, that means it isn't. That means it isn't National Opposite Day. And uh, I said, no, it's National Opposite Day. She says, no, it's not. It's not a National Opposite Day because it's the opposite of being National Opposite. Uh, yeah, yeah, it took me a minute or two. It was, it was, yeah, I know. <laughs> She, uh, yeah, that didn't turn out the way uh, I, want, I wanted it to. But uh, anyway, she, she, yeah, she got me on that one. She got me on that one. I was not expecting that response from her. Um, but <laughs> that's my daughter. Anyway, so, uh, to here, the National Opposite Day. Let me go back here. There we go. No, wrong. There we go. National Opposite Day. I'll drink to that. So on National Opposite Day, should I be drinking uh, something else besides this wine? Or should I be drinking uh, a different wine? Should I be drinking, um, oh, let's see, the Pinot Noir we had last week? I don't know. Maybe I've had too much of this already. National Opposite Day. Anyway, so uh, what else do we have here for National Days? Uh, National Seed Swap Day. The last Saturday in January is National Seed Swap Day. I'm not really sure what that's all about. Uh, January 26th, that's tomorrow, is National Green Juice Day. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Nas I, I have no words for that. National Green Juice Day. National Peanut Brittle Day. I'll drink to that. I like peanut brittle. I do. And uh, it's also, tomorrow is also National Spouses Day. I will drink to that. Because if I don't, I will hear from my spouse. No, seriously. I, I, I love my wife. Uh, January 27th, Monday, is National Bubble Wrap Day. Last Monday of January is National Bubble Wrap Day. Do you like, bubble wrap is fun. I, it's fun. You ever get on, I go out to the warehouse uh, where I work, and uh, sometimes there's bubble wrap on the, there's a joke in there, but <laughs> we, our warehouse guy, when he gets really, really busy and he's packing stuff off the ship out and things like that, he gets really busy and then there's bubble wrap all over the floor. So I'll walk out in the warehouse to go um, uh, 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 check on something or do something and, and I don't realize there bu there's bubble wrap on the floor and I just step on it. And, and I'm not talking about the little tiny ones. I'm talking about the really big bubble wrap. And I'll accidentally step on it and it just sounds like, firecrackers you know gunshots and stuff boom 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 and it just makes me jump every time now i've done this a a lot i've done this i don't know like a hundred times or so it's i've done it a lot and every time i do it it still makes me jump even if i see the bubble wrap on the floor and i try to step around it and sometimes i don't i i, I don't miss it and I still wind up on it, and it still makes me jump every time I hear it because we're in the warehouse and the noise reverberates, and it's just really, really loud, and it, it, it makes me jump. <laughs> and he laughs, you know, because he's used to it, but, uh, uh, but it always gets me, it, the rub, bubble wrap on the floor. But it's fun to pop bubble wrap, isn't it? It's, we know what bubble wrap was made for. It was made for protecting items that, that are being shipped, but... Come on, what's bubble wrap really made for? It's made for popping, right? Who doesn't sit there and pop bubble wrap? Who hasn't done that? 
Who doesn't secretly go out, you know, somewhere and nobody's looking and start popping bubble wrap? Yeah. Here's the National Bubble Wrap Day. And January 27th is National Chocolate Cake Day. Okay, I'm drinking of that. I love chocolate cake and I love it too much. So you can probably tell. Here's a National Chocolate Cake Day. Mm. There are more national days, but I think I'll put a I think I'll close that up for now because I don't want to really overdo this with the wine. Let's see what else is going on in the chat. Charles has joined us in the chat. Charles, it's great to see you. It's always great to see you. Charles, you, you've uh, recently uh, made a move, haven't you? New house, that sort of thing. Uh, congratulations. You know what? That's another That's another thing to congratulate. Uh, another reason to toast. I'm always looking for a reason to toast. Here's another reason to toast. Charles and his lovely wife have just recently moved. New house. Congratulations. Congratulations on your new home. Here's to you, Charles. Um, uh, congratulations. So I think that does it for the National Days, and I think we've done all the congratulatory stuff. I want to get through this before it gets too late, but we've got uh, everybody's been kind of quiet in the chat. I know you're there. We have a lot of people watching, but um, not uh, not too many people um, making comments here. Comment. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me what's what's going on. Charles, Charles tell me how the move is going. Uh, let me know how the move is going. I hope everything's going well. Now, we have a news item tonight. In the news. <clears throat> This is wine news. In the news, I, I don't know if you've heard about this or not, but uh, you, you like Rodney Strong? Rodney Strong wines, and we've talked about Rodney Strong in the past. My sister Gina, she uh, she uh, often quotes uh, saying that uh, you can't go wrong with Rodney Strong, Rodney Strong wines. We've had a couple here. I have one in the back right now, right there. I have a Rodney Strong Chardonnay in the back. Haven't opened it yet. Maybe one day we will. <clears throat> so here's what happened here. Rodney Strong, uh, I don't know if you heard about this, but this week they had a disaster. It was a real disaster. This was a, uh, let me see if I can pull the news item up here. Uh, okay, I'll have to read it from here. Uh, this is from the Governor's Office of Emergency Services in California. as uh, a hazardous material spill update. Uh, on the 22nd, what was the 22nd? Uh, that was Thursday? No, Wednesday. Uh, <clears throat> that was uh, a hazardous uh, material spill. Uh, they had um, a, a huge spill of wine, a huge wine spill. A uh, blending tank door popped out for unknown reasons and released 97,112 gallons of wine into Ryman Creek. Uh, the spill is stopped and approximately 20% of the spill is contained. The contractor and Rodney Strong Vineyards is conducting the cleanup. Now, um, yes, the, they had a serious wine spill in California. From the vineyard, from the Rodney Strong uh, Winery, ninety-seven thousand one hundred twelve gallons of wine that spilled into the creek there. Now, uh, from what I understand, uh, the product made it into the Russian River. They have a river there, the Russian River, not the not the rushing river, the Russian R U S S I A N River. Uh, estimate amount, they said the estimate the amount that went into the Russian River was between 46,000 to 96,000 gallons of wine. Now, uh, this was reported, that the, the, the released, uh, Rodney Strong released a, um, a statement. They released a, a um, press release here from Christopher O'Gorman. He's the director of communications at Rodney Strong. Um, he said, in the early afternoon of Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020, we became aware of a leak in one of our blending tanks. 
Um, we, apparently they tried to contain the link and tried to save as much of the wine as they could, but um, they had to <clears throat> notify the authorities, including the California Office of Emergency Response. Uh, Heldsburg Fire and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife um, to uh, notify them of the of the spillage, the release of the wine, because it is a, a you know basically it's a an environmental hazard, right? It's an environmental hazard. No, it's not oil <laughs> or something like that. It's wine, but still uh, it it can be hazardous to some wildlife there. Um, according to the press release, it says our best estimate is that at least fifty percent of the wine was diverted from waterways captured by winery pumps, drain pipes into our vineyard ponds, and additional pumping out of Ryman Creek by Rodney Strong personnel and a local third-party company. Unfortunately, some wine made it from the creek into the Russian River. At the time of the spill, river flow was at its highest volume of the week at approximately 65 million gallons an hour due to recent rains. Um, and so they're developing a plan, apparently, um, to clean up the creek bank without doing damage to the environment. So uh, he says down here, most of us here grew up swimming in the Russian River, and it is a vital part of our local ecosystem. We are deeply concerned and are doing absolutely everything in our power to protect our waterways. And that's from Christopher O'Gorman, Director of Communications at Rodney Strong Vineyards. I have heard, now, from what I understand, um, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty serious thing anyway. It's not, not just for the wildlife, but uh, also for, the, for us. You know, people love to drink wine. It's, it's like, that's 97,000 gallons of wine that we'll never see again. Oh, yeah. That's, that's terrible. That's a disaster. Oh, the humanity. Uh, so apparently, so you're asking me, well, you know, nobody's asking me, but you would probably be asking me, okay, what kind of wine was it? What, what wine was it? Um, well, from what I hear, I don't have a solid, uh, a solid uh, uh, confirmation on this, but from what I understand that uh, Mr. O'Gorman um, told the um, San Francisco Chronicle that it was Cabernet Sauvignon. So, uh, so apparently it was Cabernet Sauvignon or a blend of a Cabernet and something else. I don't know what. But the, basically it was a blending tank, apparently, that, that, uh, that released the wine. So if it was a blending tank, it's possible that they were blending uh, a cab with something else. And Which, as we all know, a lot of times... That's what a lot of wineries do: is they will blend, they will make blends with the Cabernet. It's never, a, it's it's often never a hundred percent Cabernet. Sometimes it is, but lots of times the you know they'll call it a cab, but it's really a blend of a cab and maybe something else like a Petit Syrah or Merlot or something like that. But uh, in any case, it's a um, it's a terrible loss. It's a terrible loss for um, it's a terrible loss from the environment. That's for sure. It's a terrible loss for Rodney Strong. Uh, that's for sure. I'm, I'm uh, ninety-seven thousand gallons. Uh, ninety-seven thousand gallons of wine is is nothing to sneeze. At. I mean, it's that's a lot of wine. That's a lot of wine. Uh, uh, it's also a terrible loss for us, right? For 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 those of us who will never drink or experience a Rodney Strong wine. Look, I'm. I've had a couple. Of, I've had one Rodney Strong wine. I, I'm, I'm. I don't usually buy Rodney Strong, but uh, it's not that I'm. I have anything against it. Uh, my sister Gina, she likes Rodney Strong. Uh, that's her thing. Can't go wrong with Rodney Strong. Uh, well, apparently something. <laughs> apparently this time something went wrong with Rodney Strong. Uh, <laughs> that's. Uh, I'm not trying to make light of this, but I mean, I mean, this is serious stuff. This is a real disaster. It's it's an environmental disaster, and it's a disaster for for wine drinkers everywhere, right? Ninety-seven thousand gallons of Rodney Strong wine. That's uh, lost forever. That's that's terrible. Anyway, so that's our news item for today. 
Well, uh, I was going to show you that we were starting, we're going into the uh, thing about labeling. And I want to show you something about the wine label. We're going to have a little wine label 101 tonight for those of you who are not that familiar with, with wine labeling and how wine labeling works. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use this wine as an example, the wine that we're drinking tonight, the Nuttall family wine. You know, wine labels, there are certain things that uh, that are required to be put on wine labels, and there are some things that are not required to be put, but are put on there for various reasons. And uh, some of it's for marketing purposes, some of it is for uh, uh, aesthetic purposes, some of it is is just uh, and some some of it's required by the the um, TTB, which is the um, which is the government's uh, alcohol, alcohol and uh, tobacco tax uh, bureau. Uh, I don't know why they call it TTB. It really should be ATTB, in my opinion. But uh, they just call it TTB, ttb.gov. And um, they have a they have uh, certain requirements of what you need to have, what you have to have on a label, a wine label. And there's some other things that they don't require but that are put on the wine label. And there's some confusion. You know, when you go, when you go shopping for wine, when you go shopping for wine, the, the, you have so many choices, especially if you're in the supermarket. You see all these bottles. And you're saying, well, what is this? What does this mean? What does that mean? And a lot of people pretend to know what it means. It all means. Some people really do know what it all means. But for the for the public, for the passive wine drinker, it says, oh, you know, I'm going to pick up a bottle of wine to go with, you know, this or that or whatever. And and uh, uh, they're, they're looking at all these wines, and there's a little bit of confusion there, which is which is understandable. Well, um. I'm going to clear some of that up with the, uh, this is the part four of our presentation, because that's part of the presentation is with the labeling. And as I mentioned earlier, there's some people that collect wine labels. So I get a shot there. There we go. And uh, there's some really nice wine labels. And, and a lot of it's uh, de by design for marketing purposes. Some of it is, uh, uh, some of it is, is just very, very basic, uh, like uh, the 1448, which is back there somewhere. I don't think you can see it, but it's very, very basic labeling or the um where is the other one the uh saldo wine that i showed last week which is nothing more than looks like a dymo label on the wine but that's actually by design it's actually tended that way anyway so back to the wines for a minute <clears throat> to the uh wine label back to the wine label i'm going to explain a few things basic things about the wine label here and uh, what? Uh, uh, first of all, you have uh, when you're on li standard things on wine labels, uh, you have w the brand. You have what's uh, you have the brand, and uh, that usually appears uh, somewhere. That's just the brand of the wine. Like in the, this case, it is the Nuttall family wine. Then you have the varietal which in this case is the Pinot Noir. Now the varietal can be a couple of things. Here, here's the thing about varietals. The varietal can be <clears throat> the variety of wine, like a Pinot Noir. It could be also be the grape, the type of grape that it is. Um, the grape is, uh, sometimes it's not really a varietal. Sometimes you'll, you'll see something like, like it's a state uh, a bottled, or if it's a uh, a reserve, like it'll say Pinot Noir reserved, that means that uh, that this is a Pinot Noir that that's that's of you know very high quality, this better quality than than the regular wine, and and it's basically they hold back some of the the varietal wine for aging for additional aging, and that's what what they use. Uh, to to make it a reserve wine, the um, the thing is about the varietal is it could be a grape, it can be a type of wine that's maybe a blend of of different grapes, but it is uh, it is a uh, uh, usually usually the grape, oftentimes, but that's the varietal. Then you have the vintage. The, oh, let's see if that pops up here. There you go. The vintage, 
of the wine, which is the year. The vintage means that's the year that the wine was was um, was made. Do we lose our uh, do we lose our stream here? Uh oh, we may have lost our stream. No. Okay. Uh, I just lost the stream here for a minute. There we go. Everybody see the stream? Okay. Looks like uh, we're losing it on Facebook. It looks like we're up on YouTube. All right, we're gone. We're on YouTube, but we're we lost it on Facebook. Sorry about that, folks. Looks like we had a momentary lapse of the connection there on Facebook. Anyway, where was I? Um, let me close this up here for a minute. There we go. Okay. So uh, anyway, this the 2016 in this case for the Nuttall family rinds. You have the brand Nuttall family, the varietal, which is Pinot Noir in this case. The vintage, which is the, uh, the year that it was uh, made, 2016 in this case. We have the origin, which is the... Uh, basically where the wine came from, where it originated from. Now, now, the origin, this can take a lot of different forms depending on the kind of wine you're, you're getting. This can take the form of, say, uh, in this case right here, it's from Sonoma in California. And uh, that just tells you it's a California wine. Sometimes it will say that it's uh you'll see a, a, a dock like uh pays dock which means a uh, or a pays something which means that it was um the origin was was in another country like um uh, like france pays dock means it's from france uh, it could be uh it could be italian uh d-o-c-g for dock like uh, how is it pronounced? Denomination de origin controllata e garantita or something like that. It's the guaranteed uh, denomination or the, or the guaranteed origin, I should say, of the wine. That is uh, usually an Italian uh, designation that it was somewhere in Italy, whatever region that the grape came from in Italy. Um, the... In Europe, they'll use the doc for, for other countries as well. The doc, it'll be maybe, uh, yeah, it could, it could be France or Italy or Germany or whatever. IGT, if you see an IGT there, that uh, that's a, a really, it's a, a region of origin as well. A kind of a, rather than a, a, a wine style, really more of an actual region that it came from, like uh, Germany or someplace like that. So uh, that's the origin. You'll see that sort of thing. Alcohol by volume. Now, let me show you something about the alcohol by volume. This is what I was alluding to earlier when I held up this bottle. Uh, alcohol by volume uh, is, in this case, it's printed on the side. You can't really see it very well here in this image, but it's printed on the side, and it's printed up the side of the label. And it's very, very, very small type. Now, why did they do that in very, very small type? Uh, I have my opinions on that. <laughs> I'm not going to say for sure why they did it, but uh, I have my opinions on that. So, um, but if some of the things that you, you really have to have in this bottle of wine that the uh, TTB requires are things like this. You'll have the... Um, You'll have the bottler. Uh, that's that's who bottled it. Produced and bottled by William uh, uh, Nuttall, and uh, that's or Nuttall Nuttall, and uh, that's the winery. They're required to put their name and address on the bottle of wine, so that's who produced it. Then the next thing you have is the government uh, the government health warning. This is the health warning, you know, that you're familiar with when you pick up the bottle of wine to scare people into maybe not buying a bottle of wine, uh, or whatever. According, it's a requirement. This is a requirement of the U.S. government, by the way, which says usually says according to the Surgeon General, women should not drink alcoholic beverages during pregnancy because of the risk of birth defects, 
Uh, two, consumption of alcoholic beverages impairs your ability to drive a car or operate machinery and may cause health problems. So that's the, the health warning, or the, that's the government-mandated uh, health warning. Then you have an, another government-mandated uh, requirement. Well, this is the sulfite notice. The sulfite notice that says it contains sulfites. Now, if you're wondering what is a, what are sulfites, well, sulfites are what enables the fermentation, um, partially enables the per- fermentation process. The sugar is actually in there. The sulfites uh, uh, are in there towards the end of the fermentation process. And um, the thing about sulfites is that there are natural sulfites in, a, in organic wines that, nat- that are naturally... Uh, in there or that, that are naturally placed in there. And then there are sulfites that are added to the wine later. And because of the added sulfite, sometimes you get a higher alcohol content because of that. And a lot of wineries, a lot of the big, big wineries will add a lot more sulfites. Now, sulfites, naturally occurring sulfites are not necessarily bad for you. Okay. Uh, because all all wine is going to contain some level of some level of sulfites. It's the added sulfites when you have more sulfites than you probably sh- really should have in the wine. That's where it becomes kind of an issue. So they have a sulfite notice. When you see contained sulfites, you'll you'll see some uh, wines like organic wines uh, that will say no added sulfites. What that means is that doesn't mean that there aren't sulfites in the wine. There are sulfites in the wine, but what that means is that there are no added sulfites. They don't add more sulfites to the additional sulfites. So you'll see uh, this sulfite notice in wines that have added them where it says contain sulfites. All wines contain sulfites, okay? All wines contain sulfites. But what this is saying is that it's, it has added sulfites. It just doesn't have the word added to it. <laughs> but it means that it says added sulfites. So if you see contained sulfites, that means there are probably more sulfites than what's, what uh, would be naturally uh, there for the wine during the, the winemaking process, uh, during an organic winemaking process. Okay. Um, then you have the volume of the wine. This is uh, how much is in the bottle, 750 milliliters in this case. Most wines are sold in 750 milliliter bottles, although there are some wines that are sold in smaller bottles and some in larger bottles. And you know what? One of these days, I've got, I've got some smaller bottles behind me, but one of these days, uh, actually, I've got I've got uh, a couple of wines there, some old Sutter Home, empty Sutter Home bottles that are in very, very small bottles. But um, I also have a huge bottle of wine downstairs in my wine bar down there. I'm, I'm, I might bring that up one of these days. It's, a, it's like a three-liter bottle. It's a huge bottle of wine. So, uh, so yeah, 750 milliliter uh, bottles are normal. That's, that's the usual volume for these, uh, these wines. But that doesn't mean that that's, that's a universal thing. Uh, it's somewhat universal, I guess, for, for, for most regular wine bottles. But um, you've got wi- wines in bags. You've got wines in boxes. You've got wines in, you know, and they're, you know, some 50 milliliter bottles are, you got one liter bottles of wine. You got two liter, you got three liter bottles of wine. Uh, this is just the standard wine bottle of 750 milliliter. And that's uh, that's what that's all about. The uh, next item here is uh, the, the last item on this one is about the wine. And uh, when it comes to about the wine, you usually there's something. Some wines don't have anything. Some wines don't have anything about the wine itself. Uh, some wines have too much information. And some stuff you don't want to know about. There's some wines that are that are uh, there. There's some wines that have the information there, and it's mostly marketing hype, in my opinion. That's just my personal opinion. Like this whole thing I read about uh, uh, earlier about the winemaking experience and stuff. It's it's really more just promotional marketing hype for a lot of the for for some of those wines. But uh, that's basically in a nutshell 
what you usually see on on a bottle on a typical wine bottle that's basically what's there now how much of it is required the things that are required are basically the health warning the sulfite notice the the volume notice and the uh, you know the name and address of the of the bottler and the uh, the uh, alcohol content now and we've talked about the alcohol content before we've talked about this alcohol content before and, and it's there's a variation there is an allowed variance on the alcohol content so just because it says 13.5 percent alcohol doesn't mean it's 13.5 it could be 15 percent it could be 16.5 percent they're not supposed to go over a certain variance but it really nobody's watching that i i i can tell you that the 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 the, the ttb isn't i don't think they're watching it <laughs> to be honest so who knows? There could be a lot of alcohol. Now the thing is about alcohol by volume is not is not the proof of the alcohol. Alcohol by volume, proof alcohol proof is generally about um, tw if you take this number alcohol by volume and multiply it by two, that's really what the proof is on the alcohol. How much alcohol? You know, like if it's you know if it's 12% alcohol by volume, it's it's 24 proof, basically. This is basically what it is, that's how the math works. So uh, that's that's the uh, that's the labeling there. Um, I did want to make a quite try a quick retraction. I can't talk from last week. Last week I mentioned a Bigari, uh and I want to show this to you actually. This is the bottle, this is the Bigari wine that I was talking about. Very unusual bottle. I picked this up. Uh, it was in Charlotte, by the way. It was a few years ago. Uh, the the person that uh, the the uh, wine store there that was a, it was a different wine store. It was a, a, somebody who traveled around and, and picked up wines that he liked, and he picked up three bottles of this. They drank one, and they took uh, I think a, the, the other two and put it up for sale. And I bought the last one, and this is actually I said that. Uh, last week that it was uh, uh, wine from the Ukraine. It's not. It's actually from Slovenia. This is actually a Slovenian wine. And I thought that was pretty interesting. And I thought the bottle was very, very interesting. I, I really liked the bottle. So I, I, I bought it, and I have not. This is a Cabernet. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon. Estate bottled, and estate bottled means that it was bottled by the winery, by the estate, the the, the wine, the uh, um, the grower. If you see something that, and that's another um, thing I want to mention, is that if you uh, see a, uh, if you see something that says a state bottle, it means that 100% of the wine came from grapes grown on the land uh, that uh, that is owned by the winery. In other words, the winery owns that land. They grew the grapes. They bottled the wine. So if you see it's a state bottled, that means that the state that grew the grapes, they made the wine right there, uh, and they bottled the wine themselves. That's what a state bottle means. Uh, if you don't see a state bottle, that means that the wine was purchased from the winery or from the grape grower and processed or, or I should say uh, uh, made into wine later and by uh, by third party sometimes third part other third parties will buy the wine and blend it with other wines and make their own wine a bottle of, or wine from it and put their own label on it and say it's their wine where actually they actually had very very little to do with they had nothing to do with the growing process they just bought the grapes Sometimes it had very, very little to do with the fermentation process. They bought the wine after it was fermented, and they just mixed it all together, and then they put it in their own bottle. They bottled their wine, and uh, they called themselves, uh, you know, this is their, that's their wine. That's their branded wine. And it gets a little, a little murky from that point on because you can have several wines. That's why I mentioned before a $50 bottle of wine isn't necessarily better than a five dollar bottle of wine because it is quite possible that that fifty dollar bottle of wine and the five dollar bottle of wine might actually be the same wine 
they're just bottled by two different bottlers and uh you, you've got you know this there's uh wine that you know leftover wine or whatever some some wine that's being sold on market that's already wine and some other bottler buys the 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 wine in bulk and bottles the wine and makes their own label makes their own brand of wine from it but it could be exactly the same wine as that fifty dollar bottle of wine it's a it's a very murky business the wine business is the wine industry is very murky so when it comes to shopping around for wines in the store i mean just because you've got a label that that uh you know you, you don't you you never really know you never really know what you're getting a lot of the time when it comes to to wine um so anyway, uh, let's see what we have going on the chat. Nothing on Twitch going on tonight. Uh, nothing on uh, YouTube. Uh, looks like things are kind of quiet all over the place. Actually, I don't know if it's because I put everybody to sleep or uh, because they they uh, they didn't like what I had to say. But um, if you have any comments, comments, questions, or whatever, just just send them my way. If you think I'm all wrong, I'm all wet. Tell me, you know, tell me. Let me know what's going on. Uh, tell me what you think. Do you buy a bottle of wine based on the way the bottle looks or on the label? I can say that a lot of people do. A lot of people do. A lot of people will buy the wine based on what appeals to them on the label and uh, the type of, of bottle it is, uh, what, what the bottle looks like. Kind of like what I did here. I like the bottle here. I never tried tasted this wine, and I tell you why I have not, never tasted this wine. I'm saving this. This is a, a 2012. Okay, this Bagheri Cabernet Sauvignon from the Primorska region of um, Slovenia. Alcohol 14.5 percent by volume, and uh, it is uh, it is a 2012. Maybe someday I'll open it on a special occasion. Who knows? I might open up on the wine stream on a special occasion someday. But for now, that's staying. Uh, I almost broke it tonight by accident. I was trying to pull the. I was going to show it to you, and um, I, uh, I I was on my uh, my little uh, wine bar there, and I I pulled it out. I was in the back of the wine bar, and I pulled it out, and it uh, it hit it accidentally hit another bottle of wine that was in front of it. Or it actually, wasn't wine. It was uh, this stuff called Glog. Which is kind of a non-alcoholic drink, a uh, holiday drink, and they had sitting up there, and it hit it, and both these bottles kind of went over, and I, I thought, oh wow, I broke, I'm gonna break my bottle of wine. I didn't, I didn't break. Neither bottle broke, but it was a, uh, it was a harrowing moment there. It was, uh, it was a little rough. Anyway, so um, I want to. Uh, I want to reiterate that that uh, if you want something from the uh, Bill and and um, and actually Phil too. Phil, I haven't heard from you as well as as far as uh, your uh, email. Uh, if you're if you're watching now or later, uh, I need uh, Bill and Phil and who else? Someone else did Frosty. I need to get some email addresses from or, or some mailing addresses from you so I can ship you the things that you want over the holidays. I have a couple of these that I, I want to give out to someone. Uh, if you if you want some, you know what? If you want a couple of coasters, I'll mail you a couple of coasters. They're, they're cheap to mail. They're not like I'll mail you a couple of coasters and and send them to you. Just let me know. Just tell you tell me you'd like a couple of coasters, um, you know. And uh, I'll see if I can send a couple over to you. Just 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 tell me uh, tell me what you think of the show. Uh, give me a little bit of feedback and, and a comment or two, and I'll I'll send you a couple of coasters. All right, I, I did promise my wife before we ended the stream that I would try her Millionaire's Bar. I'm not sure what exactly what she told me what was in this. I'm not absolutely sure. I think it has a um, Millionaire's Bar. Uh, it's something that she made. She makes some wonderful, wonderful things. I'm supposed to be cutting down on this stuff, by the way. And I guess I'll do so tonight, right after the stream ends. But uh, it has, uh, I think, some shortbread in it. It has some chocolate. It has a few other things in it. Mmm. 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 Good. 
Very good. It compliment the, the wine complements it. Mm. It's sweet. You know, the thing is, wines go great with a lot of desserts, but you have to be careful. That's a lot of sugar. But it's sweet. That's really good, actually. And it goes okay with the wine, with the Pinot. Not that I was surprised by that in the slightest, because I wasn't. My wife makes a great dessert. She makes a, a lot of great foods. And this is actually a pretty decent wine. And once again, we are drinking the Nuttle family. Nuttle? Nuttle? I can call it Nuttle. The Nuttle family uh, Sonoma uh, Coast Pinot Noir 2016. Bill's Hidden Track is what it's called. Um, this is a... Um, Pretty decent Pinot. I think it would go pretty well with the... It, we tried it with some of these foods. It goes pretty well with the burger, grilled burgers. I think you can have it... Uh, it'll complement a grilled burger very nicely. It'll probably uh, complement a steak very nicely as well. I didn't have a, straight, a steak tonight, but uh, it would complement that I, nicely as well. It goes well with pizza. I like the pizza, and I like the pizza with the, the black olives. It went well with that. Although I think it would go better with a pizza with mushroom. I think if uh, you had a mushroom pizza, I think it would go perfect with that. Um, it went okay with the uh, the uh, grilled chicken. It was okay with that. Uh, it goes well with the, the Gouda cheese, the uh, Gouda cheese from Trader Joe's, which I'm not surprised because a lot of different wines have gone well with that cheese. I didn't try it with uh, some of the other cheeses, but uh, it, it looked... It, over, overall, I like this wine. It's a pretty decent Pinot. Um, 2016, it is not sold. In, it's sold out in most places. Uh, if you can find this, if you can find it, I would say uh, get a bottle and hold on to it. It does taste like it has aged well. Uh, 2016, it has aged pretty well. It's, it's, uh, this, does take, this does taste like a fairly mature wine which is not a bad thing at all. It's pretty good. Uh, I like it. I think if I had uh, tried this wine a couple of years earlier, probably would have been a little bit too young. I think it's matured nicely. It's aged well. Uh, I, I, there, if there are a couple of bottles left, I think I'm going to go buy the wine store and uh, pick up what are, uh, maybe a bottle or two they have, that they still have any left. This is a good wine. I recommend it. But I like Pinot's anyway. But um, I wouldn't do that. Anyway, uh, it's time to close up the stream tonight. I want to thank you for joining me on the wine stream, the Saturday Night Wine Stream. Uh, I want to thank... Um, let's see, who was here with me here? Uh, Tim came in the very uh, beginning. Tim was here. Uh, Betsy's uh, been watching as well. Betsy, uh, thanks for, for joining in. Thanks for being here. Um, and uh, Frosty as well. As always, Frosty, it's good to see you here. And my lovely wife, Chi, of course. Patty, uh, I want to thank you for, for joining me tonight. And Nancy, Nancy, uh, thank you for being here. And if uh, Tom is with you as well, thank you for, for being here. Uh, Matt, thank you for being here as always. I, I appreciate your support and, and for being in the, in the wine stream. And Pete, um, you know, Pete, uh, I, I want to say thank you also for being here. And if Aunt Connie and Denise are watching, thank you too, both of you. And my good friend Charles. Charles, uh, thank you for joining me in the chat. And I hope the move goes very smoothly for you, by the way. And uh, uh, sounds like you're going to really, really enjoy your, your new home. That's, that's, uh, that's really good. That's really good. Um, no one else going on. Nothing else going on here in the chat except uh, Facebook. Facebook seems to be where the most of the action has been. Of course, uh, I've been the. It's been a little spotty here. The connection has been really spotty here on Facebook tonight. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Facebook. Uh, looks like it's pretty stable in in everywhere else, but it just seems like Facebook has been, uh, which is not surprising. Uh, Facebook on a Saturday night has often had issues. Uh, I often have issues with uh, with the connections on Facebook. So uh, if you're watching on Facebook and you lose the stream, you can always switch over to YouTube uh, at drinkwithrick.com or, uh, or, or Twitch or uh, uh, through Twitter at drinkwithrick. 
uh, and and catch it, catch the rest of it there. Um, apologize for that. I don't know what's going on with Facebook. I really don't. It's just uh, it's been problematic with them all the time. Anyway, I want to thank you all for being with me tonight. Next week, I you know I have a couple of options for opening. We could try to open that Rodney Strong Chardonnay. I have never tried a Rodney Strong white white wine. I have had a Rodney Strong. Um, I think I had their cab before. I don't know if I've tried their Merlot or not. But uh, I have never tried the Chardonnay, and this should be interesting. Now, I originally purchased that Chardonnay for the holidays. Uh, for th- I think it was for Thanksgiving. Around the holidays, no, it was for New Year's, uh, for those who liked white wine. And I'm not a really big white wine fan, but, um, uh, you know, I, I bought a couple of white wines. Here's the thing. is like if I open a white wine... And and like my wife Chi, she 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 likes white wine. She she will like a good uh, uh, Sauvignon Blanc. She'll she'll order a seven. Uh, she'll get a buy a Sauvignon Blanc, or she'll buy um, uh, something along those lines. And um, but she'll only drink a little bit. She'll only drink a little. It's okay, you know. She just drinks a little bit. And then the bottle is open, and then it's in the fridge. And, of course, when you open the bottle, you really need to drink it because if it sits around, especially if you put it in the fridge, in the refrigerator, it's one thing to chill a bottle of white wine, which there's a – we're going to get into that next time. I don't want to get too deep in the weeds with that. But, you know, there's this whole thing about chilling white wines and not chilling reds and that sort of thing, and then a lot of that's kind of bogus anyway. Um, a lot of myths involved in that. I'm not going to go into that tonight, but, um, she, you know, it's one thing to chill a white wine to where it's, you know, the, the, the 60 degree, 54 to 55 to 65 degree range, um, which is really what you want to chill a wine to, something between 50 and 60 degrees, uh, depending on the wine, but, um, and depending on your taste somewhat a little bit. But when you put it, when you put wine in the fridge, you really don't want to put wine in the fridge. Now I do sometimes. I, I kind of do. I kind of have to. If I open a bottle of wine and it's open, and I want to drink it again the next night, um, but you really don't want it to be there very long because wine in the fridge, because the refrigerator gets down to like the 40s, you know, 45 degrees, which is really too cold to be chilling wine. You don't really want to be chilling wine that cold so if you open a bottle of wine and you don't drink it all if if you put it in the fridge you don't want to leave it in there very long you you, you need to drink it up as soon as possible and when you pull the wine out of the fridge don't expect it to taste the same as it did when you first opened the bottle because it won't it it really won't uh so when my wife opens a bottle of, of white wine or if i open one for her or if we have a party or something like what happened in, uh, on New Year's and, and we open some white wines and some people drink some of it and then there's a lot left over and it winds up going in the fr- refrigerator, um, I feel obligated, even though I, I'm not a white wine person, I feel obligated to drink that wine because I don't want to pour it down the drain, especially if it's a decent wine. I don't want to pour it down the drain. But it, it has to it has to be consumed r- right away or else it's just this is not going to be good after a few days. So... Um, in the fridge, so that that's kind of what I what, what I do. Anyway, I went off on a tangent. That's what this is, stream of consciousness show. Um, but I've got this Rodney Strong Chardonnay that was not open. That maybe will will open up in the future. I don't know if we'll open up next week or not. I don't know. What do you say? You think I should open that up next week, or should I try something else? Let me know. Email me. Email me at rick at savoyamedia.com. That's rick at S-A-V-O-I-A-M-E-D-I-A.com. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you liked uh, to see me drinking. I'll see if I can pick it up. Recommend a good wine to me. Uh, you know what? If you have a bottle of wine, if you are a vintner and you want to uh, send me a bottle of wine to, for a fair review, fair review, I, it'd have to be an honest review. Uh, if you're not afraid of an honest review, from a a layman, a, a, a just a regular person like me drinking wine, send me a bottle. I'm, I'm okay with that. Just send me a, a bottle of wine and contact me and let me know and, and send me a bottle and I will give it a fair, honest review. Okay? Unbiased. Unbiased. We're not biased here. 
okay? Uh, even with white wines, I'm unbiased on, 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 on that. Even though I'm, I'm not a big fan of white wines, I'll drink a white wine. I'll, I'll taste it and test it. It's okay. Um, it's fine. I'll give it a fair review. All bias aside. But uh, that's, uh, you know, you, you can uh, contact me there. And you can also uh, contact me, leave comments at drinkwithrick.com. It's time to close up the stream tonight, and I want to thank everybody for being here with me tonight. And uh, even though most everyone was pretty quiet, except Tim, Tim, thank you for being here as well. And I hope your daughter is, is doing well as well. You know, Tim's daughter is uh, uh, is uh, quite an, uh, an Instagram influencer, and uh, she's really into to that. Check, it, check her uh, Instagram out. Uh, I want to say thank you for everyone for being here with me tonight once again because I do appreciate you. This Once again, the show is not about me. It's not all necessarily about the wine. It's about us, you and me, getting together and just having a good time. Um, I would also like to uh, ask that you please do not drink and drive. Uh, and you know what? Next week, next week I'm going to... Uh, at the risk of, of putting a, a damper on the whole wine stream, I'm actually going to rel, uh, relate a couple of stories to you, personal stories, about why you should not uh, drink and drive. These are personal, very personal stories, but I want to share them with you because I think it's very, very important. Uh, please do not text and drive because that's a Personal pet peeve with me. And you know what? I drive, I commute back and forth between here and Rock Hill, South Carolina, every day, five days a week. Um, and I, I I would say hardly a day goes by that I don't see at least one person on the road. You would think that people are smart enough, in the, especially in this day and age, that people are intelligent enough to know that when you're driving a vehicle, that uh, you know that, that that you would be paying full attention to what you're doing, and that you would concentrate on driving the vehicle. That you would not be on your cell phone texting uh, on your cell phone, and it just amazes me. It just amazes me how often I see people doing so. Look, look, texting and driving. I mean, look, drinking and driving is dumb. It's stupid. Okay. No, no, no uh, argument there. Texting and driving, that's when you're really not impaired. You're not impaired. So you should have, be smart enough to know. I mean, you should be aware enough to know that that's a bad idea. But it just amazes me how often people do stuff like that who text and drive. And texting and driving is absolutely stupid. It really is. It's just plain stupid. And let me tell you something. And, and at the risk of getting feedback, look, you send me feedback and one. You know what? As a matter of fact, if you disagree with me about texting and driving, please email me. Please email me and tell me why I'm all wet. Tell me why I am off on the wrong track. Tell me where I am, uh, am all wrong. Because I'm not. I'm telling you, this is one of those places where I'm not. If you are texting and driving... My personal opinion, you should not have a car. You should not have a driver's license. That's my personal opinion. If you are texting and driving on the road, you should not be allowed to drive a car. Okay? You're not responsible enough to drive a car. Okay? I'm just saying. So, please, do not drink and drive. Do not text and drive. And I didn't mean to get on a rant there, but I, I just, I've just seen so many stupid things on the road. And Look, I'm not the world's best driver either. I've made my mistakes as well. But I tell you what, I'm driving back and forth, commuting back and forth every day. I've seen some pretty pretty stupid stuff. I really have. And, and I just, it, it's a lot of that's so unnecessary. So please, do not text and drive. Okay, enough of the rant, okay? <laughs> Let's leave on a positive note. Um, once again, thank you for joining me on the wine stream tonight and, uh, join me again here next week. 
I want you to have a great week. I want you to have a safe week. Join me here again next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream where we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.